Hey everybody, Dr. Rick uh, coming at you from the H. Look, I hope that uh, no matter what's going on, that you are well into your week, that things are going as planned. But remember, uh, there are going to be many times that things do not go as planned. As long as you're breathing, you're still in the fight. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't turn around. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about something that's going to definitely be controversial and edgy because it needs to be said it needs to be broached because from a person that's sitting back from my perspective who has observed the use of propaganda and uh, information stimuli to promote discard and promote consumption and do everything I understand how media works um, at a level that many people don't um, this isn't to put myself on any pedestal this is just simply say we learn things so that we can be an instrument of problem solving uh, not to have pissing contests not to have uh, intellectual uh, debates I have no desire to say I know more or I'm better than anybody I just want to take what I've invested so much of my life and share so that we are aware of it. Um, and so I'm probably going to, at this point, piss out both sides of this particular argument. And you guys who have followed me for any time know that I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to be liked. Uh, I said that uh, what? it's been now 14 years that I've been doing this thing online and I've been saying it before then, but since I've been online, I've been telling you that I'm here to speak truth. And at times the truth is gonna upset people because nobody is 100% right all the time. Nobody's perfect. So at some point the truth is going to irritate you or disturb you or challenge you. And that's what it's supposed to do. What I'm gonna talk about here is something that is on the surface of funny little conversation to some others irritating and annoying but nobody's really taking it as seriously as, should, as it should be taken and that is this thing that floated around for a while and I waited for it to die because I didn't want to contribute to the, the virality of it but what I will tell you is this uh, this whole uh, argument or statement by black women uh, who would rather be in the forest with a bear than to be alone with a black man uh something to that account and it's being pushed and it it was even when it was pushed out there and i guarantee it wasn't pushed out there by us but when it was pushed out there and uh it, it was given some framing and some context and some reasoning and some rationale behind it to make it make sense right but the whole idea is to get a black woman to say, I would rather be in the forest with a bear than to be with alone with a black man. And now let me be very clear on this. This wasn't just any black man. This was a stranger. This was somebody I don't know. So I can't judge their character. I can't determine what they're like. And that is what made the conversation interesting. But let me tell you something. As a wildlife enthusiast, while I have definitely seen and read about people survive, surviving encounters with bears, let's just say that that's not going to be the prevailing outcome. Now, granted, granted, you can. Um, do certain things that will lessen the fact that a bear attack, not every bear that sees you is looking to attack you. Most bears, unless they live in highly de, um, populated, in uh, a populated, uh, condensed particular geographical locations, a lot of them haven't even seen humans. So they don't know what to make of you. They are trying to figure you out just like you are sitting up and wondering what they're up to. They're wondering what you're up to because they haven't seen you before. They don't know where you fit in the pecking order. You, they may be prey as far as you're concerned. And we do know that we like to kill stuff that ain't bothering us. So you never know. But here's what I can tell you is an encounter with a bear is definitely not. If it turns violent, <clears throat> you're good. 
you're good. Uh, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, and that's just with a black bear. You start getting off into brown bears, grizzly bears, Kodiak bears, and stuff like that. Just kind of a wrap. But anyway, now here's the thing is, the truth of the matter is, if you study and you've been around my sisters, whom I love to death, but this is absolutely ridiculous underneath the surface. Now, again, you give it the right context and you say the right things. Well, if you look at the fact that the second leading cause of death uh, for black females, 15 to 44, is intimate partner homicide, and that there's a 22 to 23, up to 24 percent uh, the domestic violence rate of domestic partners within the black community. Now, the thing is, that goes both ways. They don't talk about that. Now, the thing is, there's a difference in the level of violence and the occurrence of death between black men and black women. But black men and black women are equally violent in the relationship with the separation of about one percentage point. Now, the difference is the black man's probably going to get scratched up, slapped, pushed, in most instances, sometimes stabbed and shot. But in most instances, he's going to get spit on, kicked, slapped, whatever. More than anything, temper is going to flare up or whatever, but nothing life-threatening. When a man loses his temper and a man feels you know, a certain way, especially if he isn't emotionally sound, if he doesn't have a high level of emotional intelligence, emotional uh, maturity, and has the ability to uh, effectively regulate his emotions, he can be very dangerous. And so I get that. But even in the context of, let me tell you something, you can't get a black woman to stay in a room with a wasp or a spider. You're not going to get a black woman to stay in the freaking forest with a bear. Now I get what's going on, but what you got to understand is there's a person on the other end of that statement that has just been told I'd rather get eaten because that's how they're going to see it, whether that's the way it was said or not. I'd rather get eaten by a bear than to fuck with you. Now, the truth of the matter is, here's where it doesn't actually make rational sense because the vast majority of black women who are harmed by black men aren't harmed by black men who are strangers. That's the thing. They're harmed by the black men that should be protecting them. They're harmed by the black men that should be covering them. They are harmed by the very ones they trusted with their safety. So the idea that there's this strange black man out there that's just killing everybody, that black men can't be trusted. The truth of the matter is there's a lot of culpability that goes both ways. I'm not a victim blamer. Black man puts his hand on a black woman. He gets whatever he, he, whatever he gets in the way of negative consequences he deserves. There's absolutely no excuse for it, no whatever. Now, now to me, when I say that, what I mean is all things considered. Now, if a black man is standing there and you're coming at him, black woman with a knife or a gun, you have just equalized the relationship in a physical sense. You have just leveled the playing field. At that time, he has every right to do whatever he needs to do to make himself safe, and that includes unlife you. Now, that's just the way it is. The bottom line is you pick up something that can take my life. You just level the playing field. I can no longer give you the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, look, I'm just gone. I can't say that because I can say just gone and then I'm ended up and, and, and dead and my family's burying me. So, no, that, that's not what I'm talking What I'm talking about is she says something you don't like or she tells you she doesn't want to be with you anymore. Or, I mean, something a little bit more egregious, like she cheats on you. Keep your hands to yourself. I understand how we feel and like how we like to deal with things that we feel that uh, encroach upon our peace and our freedoms and our and all that. And nothing is more dear to the average man than his ego. So yeah, you 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 mess with that, and we gonna act up. But the bottom line is that's because we lack emotional. Uh, maturity, we lack emotional intelligence, we lack the ability to sit up and say, you know what, this is what we are going to uh, do to solve this problem. Instead, we act out. Acting out is not mature. Acting out is not manly. Acting out is not how we saw things as men. Acting out is what happens to immature uh, males that want to throw tantrums. If you look at any species, there's always going to be an alpha at some point that has to come along and get a pubescent or adolescent male 
that's cutting up and putting the kids in danger, whether it's a gorilla, whether it's a lion or whatever, and put them in check. You know, it's a part of the process, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. We shouldn't be the supposedly mature in doing that. But at the same time, we need to get off of this crap about the bear in the forest. Uh, the argument was presented and it was given some type of context that makes sense on the surface, but absolutely it's ludicrous. Number one is think about the conversation. If I'm having a conversation with you and my conversation is I'm, I'm having some concerns about what's going on with you, but I have a desire to have some type of meaning relationship with you, but I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell the world that I would rather be in, uh, a far worse with one of the most ferociously and powerful terrestrial animals on the planet uh literally having the capacity to kill me with less than in less than 10 seconds that's where i would rather be that that bear simultaneously cannot give me any type of love or affection because it does not relate to me or know me it cannot provide me with any protection because it sees me as an enemy uh, instinctively, but that's what that's why that's where I would rather be. How about the truth of the matter is we have a problem. We have a problem with the fact that black women go missing more than any other group. We have a problem with the fact that the second leading cause of death for black females between 15 and 44 is intimate partner violence. And while all of those partners aren't black. A significant a part of them are we have a problem where when we see a black woman that has been harmed we start to look for the excuse or the reason why she was harmed instead of sitting up and saying not on my watch how about we have to look and be more astute and aware of the fact that things are being thrown in front of us to keep the gender war going so that we can sit up and spend more time fighting one another instead of uniting and building something that we can literally use to elevate and empower us and pass down to the next generation to do something far beyond what we've done. We consistently spin our wheels because we don't want to acknowledge any wrong on our side. We want the other side to see what they've done, but we don't want to acknowledge culpability. We don't want to discuss or talk about what we should be doing and, and be accountable and be responsible. And so, yeah, I just had to talk about this for a minute. I'm not going to stay on it any longer, but I had to talk about it. We have a responsibility to be more aware of how we are being controlled, manipulated, and handled, how they are putting things in front of us. A bunch of this stuff isn't starting from us. It's being put into our spaces and then unleashed, and we are jumping on it because we are. We're frustrated. Black women are frustrated, and honestly, they have a reason to be frustrated. But understand this, black men are equally frustrated and just as justifiable in their frustration. And the truth will not be uh, understood until we recognize that we are not one another's enemies. We are not one another's enemies. On that note, look, I'm going to jump off. I'm going to get off here, but I had to share that with you. I thank you guys for lending me your time your in your ears. Uh, have a blessed day um, and uh, show some love, show some support to the people around you. Love on them. Be kind. Uh, on that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.